What a wild weekend of football. Some good, some bad. We're going to get into the studs. We're going to get into the duds and talk about our feelings on today's episode. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Jason, did you unplug yourself? <laughs> yes, I Your did. headphones? <laughs> we have a malfunction? Oh, I'm back. I'm back, baby. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers. Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right? Jason Moore. Andy Holloway. Back in Deucer's Alley, we have the judge himself, Al Borland, and um, Papa Josh. Yeah. Uh, he looks Oh, happy. he's dancing. He's dancing. The Deucers. Why do the evil prosper? The Deucers <laughs> hey. took us out this week. Al That's took true. Me, Al took me out um, and probably eliminated me. I, if I beat Papa Josh this coming week, I will be in the playoffs. I will not beat Papa Josh this week. His mm. team is unfortunately very good because, Andy, you came up with a great trade for him. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, now he's now he's on top of the world. I um, oh, I did lose to Papa Josh. I think I had the second most points or something like that. Lost Tank Dell for the season. Yeah. Want to cry. Don't fall in love with a Texan. This is what I'm learning over the last 15 years of fantasy because mm. I, I had the, uh, the the famous Arian Foster when he went down. That worked for a long time, uh, Goodbye My Lover song, and I'm singing it again with Tank Dell. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, Papa. What's funny is I I was disappointed to lose to Papa Josh, and then we did the math this morning. It nah, didn't it matter. didn't matter at all. I was clinched regardless. But uh, Papa Josh riding high in the regular season here, mm. but the injuries they were there were lots of them this week. Not just Tank Dell. Derrick Henry went down. Ramondre Stevenson uh, will be lost for a while. That's one of my guys. Austin Eckler. Austin Eckler totally is gone. healthy. Dude. Totally healthy. Nope, dude. What? Yeah, thoughts on Austin Eckler, Jason? Um, well, I think Mike said it best yeah. before the show. Mike said he got Thanos snapped out of existence. He just does. He just poof, just gone. Yeah. One one week, everything was great, and then three weeks ago, he was a good fantasy asset, good football player, and then all of a sudden, as soon as I turned down the most incredible trade offer from Andy for Austin Eckler. Uh, Thank you. Thanos snapped his fingers, and now I mean he he has just yeah. vanished from relevance. Yeah, something he, is very wrong. And every time he gets the ball, it, it's a negative play for the Chargers. It's uh, it's been hard to watch. Uh, but Brees Hall, your other running back, at least oh. he was thirteen for sixteen on the ground. Mister Efficiency. <laughs> That's just wild. Hey, We've had some bad over one. football. Hey, both of those running backs yeah. did barely outscore Ramondre Stevenson all the studs all the duds on today's show we'll break it down we'll look to the future we got a couple buys next week but then it'll be fantasy playoffs I mean last week of the regular season for fantasy players and uh we're not alone in our reactions to this weekend you guys submitted your best puns mm, we're jumping in right now mm, let's start with the good the good how about Nico Ballin? Oh, or Threebo Samuel. He's also Debo Manuel. <laughs> there was a Brock party. Brock Sturdy. Yeah. Mike, heavens to Betsy. <laughs> I just, I like what he's doing. Walvin Camara. Oh, my God's back. Devon A. Champ. Yeah. S Sam LaPorsche. I think it's better if you say Sam LaPorsche. Oh, mm, yeah. Oh, yeah, LaPorsche. Yeah. Alu and, aluminium. And then, uh, <laughs> yay, McBride. Oh, yes. But they weren't all good. You got my my guy, Zach Lost. Oh. Pat Fryer poop. <laughs> That's the best. Uh, what about exhaustion? Oh. Next, Eckler. Yeah, or <laughs> Austin. What the heckler? <laughs> Terry McGoosen. <laughs> and Justin Herbarf. Oh, tanks. Oh. Tanks for oh, the memories? Too soon. Oh, <laughs> tanks for the memories. Hollywood Brown. Mm. Hollywood Brown is gone, too. He's just, dude. Poof. He's got a heel problem. He needs a heel up because yeah. he does not look very good. How could good. you possibly start him anymore? 
You you oh you cannot you can't. Well, I thankfully mean, he's on by, so you can't. We we should like have a segment this week, Brooks. That's like big names, big big drops, because there are some people in that category. Because you gotta have confidence in the playoffs to put them in there. But maybe maybe the injuries mean mean you're stuck. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, um, uh, Amari Cooper went out this week too. Yeah. Yeah, there there were a lot of injuries, but uh, yeah, to to speak to Austin Eckler, I mean, you talk about confidence to put a player in. I mean, he had seventeen opportunities. That's not like, why aren't they involving him? Why aren't they using him? He had fourteen carries and three targets. Do you guys know in half PPR how many fantasy points he scored without I, looking? I you're you're looking. You're looking. It. Okay, don't look. Andy. No. What was the question? He had fourteen carries and three targets. Seventeen opportunities. How many fantasy points did Austin Eckler score with 17 opportunities in half PPR? I don't know. I'm, you're I'm you're too high. I mean, <laughs> I'm guessing it's like 10 points or uh, like, like I told 3. you. 3.7. He scored. He did not crack four fantasy points with 17 tries. His career? Well done, Kyle. Pulling that data so fast. I was asking Kyle his career points per opportunity because if you have 17 opportunities – he he's career his career has been point nine five so he should have about fifteen to seventeen fantasy points on that out on those opportunities. This year it's been point six five and plummeting. The last three weeks is uh, well uh, done, Kyle. Point nothing. I mean, this is um, you know, this is fantasy football. We have we have had a long history of Austin Eckler's dominance. Yes, and carrying teams and being the check down guy that you would think like. The math had said when Mike Williams and, and other players are out, he fills in the gap. And suddenly, heading into free agency, it all changes. Uh, Kai Borg also sent out a tweet with regards to his uh, yards gained on rush attempts the last two weeks. Negative one, two, 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 three, five, five, six, negative seven, negative two, zero, one, 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 one. Two, two, three, no. four, 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 four. So, um, yeah, confidence is not going to be there. Here's the problem. Let me let me translate this to some meaningful advice. Austin Eckler's playoff schedule is great. Saquon Barkley's playoff schedule is terrible. Yeah. Austin Eckler's playing bad football. Saquon's Saquon playing, Barkley's playing good football. Yeah. So when you start to look matchup versus performance, that's going to be the most difficult discussion for people when they're heading into the playoffs i mean it should be easy like saquon is the much better play right now there i austin eckler is great he is he is yeah but what awesome about Ta dude. tajay spears versus austin eckler? i would play tajay spears without uh, without question um right now i believe nothing has come out it's not on the injury report maybe it's just my glass half full hope but I believe something is up with Eckler. It has like he's to be. injured somewhere. And after the season, we're going to find out like he was playing through a bad back or what, whatever the case is. Even because though he helped lead them to a 6 nothing victory over the Patriots. <laughs> a shutout victory. The Which dominant. the Patriots covered. Yes. Because it was the Patriots the plus 6.5. It was 6.5? I six, thought it was 5.5. No, it was 6.5. And they cover, at least uh, the way the weekend opened, it okay, was 6.5. Because okay. I looked at our, our picks that we do every week. That has to be the first time. And I took team. the Patriots, and they covered the spread with, that no points. with zero. <laughs> that has to be the first time in the NFL someone has covered the spread while being shut out. Well done, New England. All right. Shall we talk news? Let's go. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Jonathan Taylor underwent surgery three to five weeks. He's going to miss time Dude, with the thumb injury. That timeline is the perfect amount to drive you insane. <laughs> it's, I mean, like legit. If you have Jonathan Taylor and you're just in a redraft league He's, and you're holding on three weeks, okay, I will hold on to, to Jonathan three Taylor. Three weeks would be fantasy championship? It would be. No, it would be, it'd be the second semis. round. Semis. Yeah, it would be. So that's great. Okay, mm -hmm. I get Jonathan Taylor, or or he's out through the fantasy playoffs. One of those is in the timeline. Tank Dell uh, crashing yeah. down to block on a Damian Pierce touchdown. That was the old. Just so you know, that was the ultimate knife twist play for my team because 
I started Tank Dell and Devin Singletary, and they gave the ball to Damian Pierce, yeah. who ran in for a touchdown, and then Tank Dell broke his fibula, fractured fibula, will be placed on IR. When you have a 165-pound player, you want them blocking right well, in the center of the line. They never saw it coming. It worked. That's true. He did. They did score a touchdown yeah. on the play. I don't know the details, and I don't know if anybody else does, on how severe the fracture was. Um if it's just a, if it's not a like displaced fracture, from my knowledge, it's like not a major injury to come back from. Um, so we should, you know, I start thinking about next year when a sure. player breaks their leg. Yeah, so of course, Kenny Pickett undergoing ankle surgery. Oh, not playing, placing him on IR for now, hoping he would be back by week eighteen. Let me tell you guys, I don't know the amount of money I would pay. But if they could move the Thursday night game this week to a channel I don't have access to, <laughs> mm. I would really appreciate it. The New England Patriots and Zappy against Mitch Trubisky, maybe, and the Steelers with an over under of thirty one points. Yes, nice. Prime and and time. do you do you take the under there? Because I want to. Yeah. It was just six nothing with the Chargers and Patriots. It was real, real rainy though. Is it gonna be rainy in this game? Um man. I mean, I guess the the probability is down goes another quarterback. Yeah, down goes Derek Carr concussion. Down goes Derek Henry concussion. Goodness. Down goes Amari Cooper concussion. We finally saw the hit that it would take to take Derek Henry out. Because I, I have not seen the hit. Oh, I, we were watching all the games. I missed that. Goodness, let me take a look. Here. Goodness gracious, it is a thumping. I mean, he goes airborne. And that then, seems hard to do. Yeah. And then he hits his head on the ground. I mean, it was it was a big time. Okay, I'm hit. looking at it. Okay, like that's All what right. it takes. That is the level of that physicality. Was, he it was takes. in the air and then yes. took a helmet shot. Yeah. yeah, the odds of him playing next week seem low. Yeah, they do. Christian Watson exited with a hamstring injury. This one is devastating. Christian Watson, <sighs> second consecutive week with a big game, heavily involved, multiple touchdowns. Breakout finally happening. And did he... And look the part. Look the alpha. Did he get hurt? I, I, did, when you guys were watching it, yeah. did it seem like he got hurt and then he stopped? Or did it seem like he was trying to do the right thing and not go out of bounds? No, 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 and no. And then no. hurt himself. It was hurt and yeah. then stopped. Okay. Yeah, yeah. for sure. It, I think he got hurt like about three or four yards before where he yep. stopped. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not good because he was, it was a hamstring earlier in the year. Yeah. And it's it been was, a hamstring his yeah, whole career. Whole, yeah. It's it's a chronic problem now. Ramondre Stevenson. This is high ankle sprain? Yeah. Goodbye. See you later. Yep. You're going to have a, a, a really bad situation here with Ramondre because, you know, Jonathan Taylor, the three to five week timeline on the thumb. But w you would expect when he comes back, it's it's full go. Yeah. You know that usually when players come back from a high ankle sprain, they take a loss for a couple of weeks on production. So, He's probably gone three weeks, and then when he comes back, you don't have a lot of confidence. Let in me his... let me ask you something, Jason. Do you want more of this? Do you want to make the playoffs? I one and watch Eckler and not I, Ramondre. I I could tell you where I'm at now emotionally <laughs> is I hope what happened to you yesterday happens to me next Sunday which oh, where is you get like 200 points scored on you where where I mean you knew you lost this is a clean death this is a sharp knife oh this is you 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 didn't you didn't know he, Sharpen he the walked axe, please. right up behind you you never saw nothing um, <laughs> never felt nothing never no you just nine night um Josh scored like 100 points in about 30 seconds and yeah you knew it didn't matter what simultaneous you did. to Tank Dell's yeah, fracture that's blade. what I want I just want to pee out you want to be out of your misery? <laughs> Let me, free me from this pain. Yes. Let, I, I want to focus on our champ, champ, Woo. champ league oh. that uh, yeah. I believe we took the bye, right? Uh, we did. This fantasy. is uh, like a fantasy, a fantasy euthanasia like, situation? Yes. It, is, yes. it, it is the time of year when you start finding out what the most important league really mm -hmm. is. <laughs> and it's Dino Jr. <laughs> and sometimes it's your tertiary league. Your tertiary <laughs> Um. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't <laughs> wait to hear about that. Brian Robinson hamstring. Teams on by. You saw. I mean, Antonio Gibson's going to come up on waivers. Yeah. yeah he he would he would have been and, a uh, really good pickup if uh, they went on by. Chris uh, Rodriguez. No, yes. Did I get the name wrong? 
Uh, let's I think see. I got it right. Somebody tell me. Yeah, Chris Rodriguez yeah. Jr. Yep. Uh, Hollywood Brown, heel injury, full goose. Uh, goodness. Yeah, Kylo continues to look bad. Jalen Hurts left, came back. DeAndre Swift took a big hit, went to the locker room. Puka Nakua went out, came back. Yeah, Puka, Puka had a big game. Puka had a monster game. Could have been bigger. Obviously missed uh, some time there, but he he's tough. He plays through these things. And um, then at the end of the game, you got Cooper Cup with the touchdown. So there's just something special about Puka Nakua, where you know the, all the draft pundits and the in the you know the track numbers and everything it betrays everything he really is on the field like people oh you're not an athlete i i watched him pull away from three browns on a 70 yard touchdown yesterday that yeah where's the four uh, he's not a four four guy okay if he runs away from the defenders all of them that's more valuable yeah he's do he the is. do the darn <laughs> thing in pads run the 40 in pads yeah. yes yeah they really should i mean goodness gracious what? i mean at least a helmet. That's how you play football. Yeah. Football speed. Put yeah. a football in their hand. Yes. And let them run if it's a running back. Otherwise, if it's a wide receiver, they can run without the football. I mean, stupid people. All right. And, and and he should have been. I mean, Puka Nakua now. Redraft the NFL draft right now. Oh, my First goodness. round wide receiver. 100%. He's before Huge. <laughs> <laughs> I think most players would be before Sorry. Quentin Johnston. No. I mean, Where does, I know. Quentin I know. Johnson should be drafted in the sixth round as like a developmental prospect. Yeah. I know it was raining, but that doesn't mean you have to do the whoa, 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 whoa. Like triple drop. If you're gonna drop it, just just do a straight drop to the ground. Don't do the juggle for 15 feet. It looks. He worse. wanted to drop it four times, and he did. That's painful, man. That's painful. Yeah. Maybe you can turn it around. Hey, they won in a shutout. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Studs of the Week presented by NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. Well, it wasn't all bad. We had some studs this week, including the Thursday night quarterbacks, Geno and Dak. We talked about that game. Both were huge, dominant. Dak plays Philly, Buffalo, Miami coming up. Geno plays San Francisco this week, and so I don't think you're going to react to his big performance with a must-start uh, type of situation. Probably but, not, no. But how about uh, – let's talk about this guy because humongous performance. Jason started the week, was already the quarterback seven on the year before the week began. It's going up. Brock Purdy, four touchdowns, no picks, has his weapons, uh, has the second-highest yards per attempt in NFL history at 9.6. You know, he what? is now – yeah. The favorite for league MVP. Brock Purdy is plus 300 for league MVP. Jalen Hurts and Dak are very close at th plus 350. Those are your contenders right now. And, you know, as the wind blows, right? I mean, one bad performance and that'll go away for Brock Purdy because that's the way people treat him now. If he has a bad game, he sucks. And if he has a good game, he's a hero. But this is, I mean, at some point you got to give Brock Purdy his due. Yeah, I mean, he looks awesome. He makes some plays happen that uh, I don't think would happen with another quarterback in there. There's a reason that Kyle Shanahan was so bullish about him, uh, stuck with him through injuries, through this offseason. He knows this is th this dude's got it. He's real. He's here to stay. Even fantasy, with the backwards cap. <laughs> yeah, even with the backwards cap. Um, oh, man, if you don't know that take, that was uh, Colin Coward. Talk. Did oh, you see that, Mike? That's a long time. Yeah, oh, that was a long yeah, time ago. No, has, no, no. It has to be a bit now. Yeah, it's been going on for years. Started with yeah. ba Stafford. Baker or no, Stafford he, with he the talks, backwards yeah. hat. Yeah, he always says. You're saying that's a tongue in cheek situation? I think. I, so. I think it started not tongue in cheek, yeah. but now it's like he's he's uh, that would comfort me. Yeah, now he's like he, backwards hat guy is is bad. I think well, that was mostly in I, points per game. Brock Purdy is sitting at six right now. I think it for Cowherd. It's it's just clicks. No, I, nevertheless, I was just making a joke about it. Yeah, 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 Brock Purdy, sixth in points per game. You know, outside of uh, Allen Hurts and Prescott, you know, Brock Purdy over Mahomes is like, a, it seems like an easy decision right now. Mahomes with another sub-20 point performance. Yeah, so. I mean, Bro with those weapons, Brock Purdy Brock is. Brock Purdy's upcoming schedule, Seattle. We just saw a back nice. and forth with Dak. Yeah. That's great. Mm-hmm. 
Arizona. Yeah, you nice. can throw on them. Although I could also see, you know, hey, he'll a be beat fine. down. Uh, Baltimore might be a little bit hard in the second round of the playoffs, but then championship week, the Washington Manders. Perfect. That is perfection to the to the point where like over everybody. Look, I toyed around with, thought about, did not. I don't think I could have done it. I don't blame my process. My, Brock was my start of the week. He's on my bench. Because I've got Jalen Hurts. Yeah. And I wasn't yeah, going to yeah. bench Jalen Hurts of course not. ever. And Jalen Hurts still had a good fantasy game. But I think I might have won had I put in Brock Purdy. And so if you I You just would have needed some of Mike's titanium or adamantium <laughs> yeah. underpants. Yeah. And so, but like week 17, if if I'm in the championship and Brock Purdy's there, yeah. I don't care who else I have. Brock Purdy's going to be in that lineup. Also, get your uh, quarterback. Starts of the weekend for championship week, guys. <laughs> you already Don't put forget. yours in. <laughs> <laughs> Jalen Hurts, uh, it, it was all right. I mean, they got their butts kicked. He has 12 rushing touchdowns on the year. Let's talk about this for a second for fantasy players. Jalen Hurts is going to continue to be a, a top-tier option for fantasy leagues. But genuinely, it came out this week that Roger Goodell is, on, is going to have a heavy influence on the tush-push rule set. Mm -hmm. His opinion is going to weigh heavily on what the committee does. They're definitely and his rid of it. committee, like his opinion, it came out that he wants to ban it permanently. So, He's a so coward. what what will be the difference though, for a referee to call like on a QB sneak? The difference is the the, the, the players coming and I'm, I'm assuming pushing the booty of the quarterback, right? What, yeah, right. Would, but but players are players get pushed all the time now. Like when there's a when there's a pile. And then, like the offensive linemen see it that their players up. Well, they run and they start pushing the pile. Right. I mean, I, I guess I'm saying if this play doesn't exist for Jalen Hurts, it will make a it will make a big impact for yeah. his fantasy value because right now it is a 100 percent guarantee. Not that they get the play right, not that they succeed. It's like 90 percent, but that they run it, and that's more important. There isn't a question. When they're at the one yard line, they don't want to be like play around. Oh, we're going to make you think we do the tush push. We're going to run. They just run that play 100% of the time. I love it as a Jalen Hurts manager when it's like, I just know they're there. He's got a touchdown. And the so, amount of alerts I've gotten on my phone that just say Jalen Hurts one yard touchdown. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Well, over the last three seasons, he has 35 rushing touchdowns. That's five more than Saquon Barkley has in his entire career. What did career. you just say? Over the last three seasons, Jalen Hurts has five more touchdowns than Saquon Barkley has in his entire career. And Thir rushing. 35. 35? Rushing touchdowns. That seems like a made-up number. Yeah. Now, I do think <clears throat> if they get rid of the tush-push, Jalen Hurts will still dominate with quarterback sneaks. It's not like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's not like Tom Brady didn't win every quarterback sneak back in the day. Yeah, he. I mean, certainly... I think it takes your distance. It changes the equation when you're like a yard and a half or two. You yeah, might they, hand they, it off a little bit. Yeah, they run it from the two. Jordan Love. Dude. 25 for 36, 267 and All three. Right. Basically, perfection in the first half. I mean, he, he had only a couple of incompletions at all. And the last four weeks for fantasy, 12, 9, 5, 5 in fantasy finishes, you know, the dynasty Jordan Love managers that yep. were panicking in, in weeks five and eight and nine, suddenly three straight wins in the playoff contention. Al Borland, how you feeling? Pretty good. <laughs> nice. Thanks. Yeah, they are. They're the I, I wanted to remind you of, of not too long ago when Wait, I yeah. said I thought he would get it together and you guys all laughed at me. Yeah. Well, see, that's the, that's the thing about these situations is that you know, what happened the last couple of weeks is not like they they don't engrave that into a stone tablet as the permanent completion of his career, just like those bad weeks they didn't do it. But this is – he deserves a ton of credit. His completion percentage over the last three weeks has been outstanding. He's thrown uh, – let me see here. We got – Over the last three 10 weeks. Ten touchdowns, two interceptions. And a very nice uh, 69%. Completion percentage? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and – Three wins and over great opponents. Well, now no you Christian the, Watson though. You beat the Chargers. You yeah. beat the Lions. You beat the Chiefs. That's that's a that's a run. Plays the Giants next week. You could play him. Plays Tampa Bay. You can. I yes. believe. I believe right now the Packers are the number seven seed and would be yeah. in the playoffs. Which I will remind you, these Packers. I believe that's true. I think they took it from the Rams. Mm, they did. I think so. We can double check. Yeah, that. let's double they check. They have the that. tiebreaker sure over the Rams. Info is right, but I believe that is correct. Okay. 
And I know they have the same record, so you guys are probably Aaron right. Rodgers on this team last year did not make the playoffs. Yeah, they're, they, I mean, they're a well-coached team. They really are. Yes, the Packers are currently the seventh seed. So the Rams are out? Yeah. Rams won on again. Matthew Stafford was very good. So uh, let's take a quick break, talk about some running back studs. Alvin Kamara, 14 for 51, two rushing touchdowns, eight targets, six for 58. Should have been three rushing touchdowns. <laughs> yeah, he, he had one called back that I couldn't see why it was called back. And Looked like a touchdown to me. Ended up going to Taysom Hill, but, you know, Alvin Kamara right now, you know, I made that trade, Kyron Williams, Alvin Kamara, based on the longer schedule. We'll see how it turns out. Nice to see Kamara get this work. Derrick Henry, two rushing touchdowns before oh, the man. injury. And 100 great. yards, yeah. And and what's crazy is he went out pretty early. He was dominating. I think he had 17 carries at the half. So he he was in line for an even bigger game, but he was he was awesome. Tajay Spears is going to be fantastic going Yeah, forward. 23 opportunities for Henry, which was the most since week eight. We need you back in two weeks, big man. Devon Achan. Oh, uh, Devon yeah, Achan got into the end zone twice. Mm -hmm. Um in the first half of this game, pre blowout, twenty uh I believe Mostert had something like twenty one or twenty nine snaps. Mostert played four snaps in the second half. It was all A Chan and a little bit of Jeff Wilson mixed in. This is why Jason said he wouldn't sit Devon A Chan, is because you don't want to be caught missing out on a game like yeah, that. Yeah, there's there's only a handful of players in the league that can reliably or or you know with any kind of expectation have monstrous blow up games and you can't leave those type of players on your bench cuz those are those are league winners. I did have confidence that James Conner against his former team would do all right. Uh yeah, yeah. 25 for 105 and 2. You guys were talking about your confidence rather. It was very low. And how you just assumed he would get the work. 77% of snaps. I, this was the game script. I yeah, mean, they were winning is, the entire game, and so James Conner got the ball the entire game. One hundred percent, and that's that's what I was bringing up. I think James Conner's looked great. He looked unbelievable in this game. He's looked great every time he touches the ball. But for some reason, I think it's the wrong call. But it is not my choice. I'm not the coach. If the Cardinals are down, they use James Conner a lot less. He's not their third down, speed it up, come from behind, passing downs back the way that I still think he could be. If they're winning. They're going to rely on him, lean on him. 25 carries for over 100 yards here. Now they go on a bye and they come back against San Francisco. For the first week of the playoffs. Yeah, that that's not a game I think the Cardinals are going to be up. Uh, you know, <laughs> It's worth mentioning that Amari DiMarcato, the third down back, got concussed and left this game as well for the snap counts. But, yeah, it, it, the San Francisco game, it is at home. Not excited. Going to be stuck playing him. 100% have to. Just have to hope he does what he – look, the win he was a, an elite fantasy option for players last year it was because of touchdowns and the year before in Arizona. It was like you you saw some signs of life from the offense, but now Hollywood Brown's going down. Trey McBride's going to be the guy. That game was so weird. I, that game was rain-delayed yeah. two different times, and the second time it was so long we forgot that the game wasn't over. Chuba Hubbard, 25 carries for 104 what, what yards, two touchdowns. What the heck, man? No, this is really important. Chuba is – I mean, this is the first game – It's back-to-back -back games, right? Uh, no, this is the first game with the new coaching staff. Oh, yeah, but I'm saying he he was the RB11 last week against Tennessee. Yes, but two weeks ago with, with old coaching staff, you had Miles Sanders in there still getting 15 carries. Miles Sanders was – he had eight carries in this game. Chuba is their back going forward with this new coaching staff. All right. Christian McCaffrey did his thing. Mm -hmm. Isaiah Pacheco, 18 for 1, 10 and 1. And punched a guy in the helmet. Got ejected <laughs> for punching somebody in the helmet, probably breaking his own hand. Dude, That's you, really smart. What are we doing here? But he's been dominant. At least, like, give him the, the, the ear hole clap. Oh, nobody's ever done that. Nobody's done an ear hole clap to try to. I mean, like, you know, that would be a devastating thing. Mess maneuver. with your equilibrium? Uh, maybe, yeah. Maybe I'll go neck. Neck, oh, whoa. under the, you <laughs> See, know what I mean, like the whoa, jab Jason. the neck. <laughs> just break the trachea, man. <laughs> whoa, I mean, I'm just saying, get out there and be whoa. a man. If you're gonna get ejected, if you're gonna get ejected, get ejected for for, for a, breaking a trach, attempted murder, <laughs> for breaking a trach. <laughs> Jason's having a good Rip weekend. Rip the trachs out, man. He's having a good weekend, <laughs> everybody. Yeah, going for the turkey. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that's a you good have, movie. If, if he's eliminated, this is what you have to look forward to for the next four weeks. Uh, Kyron Williams, the uh, he, was, he was all right, 21 for 88. Got the throwaway unnecessary yeah. touchdown. Oh, the it was the game. necessary. Thank you, Kyron. You see the uh, – you see Sean McVay's com- yes. comments? No. He came out and said, uh, well, obviously there was some debate on whether we just took the knee or tried to score, but I have Kyron on my fantasy team. <laughs> what? And, and then he said, and then I'm he joking. Said a joke. I know, but he did say that. But I love that. Yeah, I love it. Thank you, McVay. I think it's the first time I've hit the panic alarm drop and done it correctly. <laughs> Good work. Proud you of proud of me, Al? Uh, absolutely. You Old know how dog, close I tricks. was to hitting that button again? I, I was watching you. I was ready to turn the lights back on when you yeah. left us in the dark. Unstoppable Rashad White, 20 for 84 and yep. a touchdown, five more targets. Atlanta, Green Bay, Jacksonville coming up. He's the RB6 on the year. Rashad White is is sort of, um, you know, kind of budget McCaffrey. I mean, I hate I it, like it's crazy to say that, but this is a player no, who's had double-digit fantasy points every week since week seven. He is a player that I feel like the only way you know that Rashad White has been the man is if he's on your team. He's one of those guys where I, I think the public perception still does not completely agree. match his output, which has been elite. Like it, He has been an elite fantasy running back. Completely. Yeah, the last seven games played, he would be on pace for 1,000 rushing yards and 700 receiving yards on 72 receptions. Yeah, I and mean, he's just been a machine in terms of giving you solid production every week that doesn't let you down. Wide receiver studs. Metcalf was Thursday night. Uh, some of you know, some of you overcame because there were some big performances this week, like Debo, four for one sixteen, two touchdowns through the air, two forty plus yard touchdowns, a rushing touchdown. Uh it's incredible. Yeah, and, and he didn't need much work to get there. He had uh, four targets and three carries. Seven opportunities in this game and was a, a monster. Tyreek Hill, for the third consecutive week, I mean, Tyreek Hill's numbers are actually some of the most ridiculous I've ever seen at the wide receiver position. Because if you take out the Kansas City game, his fantasy finishes on a weekly basis, 3 one 4 6 two, two, three, at wide receiver in a, a position that consistency is almost impossible to pull off, and he's scored 12 touchdowns so far this year. Currently on pace for 2,098 receiving yards. Ooh. That's insane. League winner written all over him. Yep. Nico Collins, 9 for 191 and 1. There's a real league winner. I know the matchup coming up this week is not great against the Jets. Gonna gonna be a little saucy, but uh, I mean, with with Tank Dell out, Nico Collins is he's just gonna bring people championships. Or Noah Brown will. No, I mean, Brown, Noah Brown's no Brown be a had very a, uh, very important pickup. He had a Noah Brown pants week. He he, he won't next week. Yes, he will. Jets. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough matchup Maybe. between Tennessee, Cleveland, Mike Evans, baby. Ten straight thousand yard season, yeah. seven for one sixty two and one. No player in NFL history had more than six consecutive, and only Ry- Jerry Rice had more total one thousand yard seasons. But mm. ten consecutive, shaping up like a first ballot. <laughs> maybe, maybe <laughs> that's that's an accomplishment. I don't first ballot's hard though, isn't it? Yo, it's it's extremely hard. You know what's hard? Ten straight one thousand yard seasons, and not only <laughs> ten straight one thousand yard seasons, but right now this season, I feel like it's the best I've ever seen him. He is 30 years old and absolutely dominating. Over the last eight weeks, in terms of points per game, CeeDee Lamb is number one, Tyreek is number two, and Mike Evans is number three. Mm. Mike Keenan Allen's four. So my aged, decrepit, yeah. old dynasty squad is riding high. Yeah. Team two old dudes. Mike Team. Evans and Keenan Allen. Crazy. Christian Watson, we talked about it. Uh, Michael Pittman, 16 targets, 11 for 105. Big game for Pittman, becoming the regular. Puka Nakua went nuclear. Um, Sean McVay said he thought Puka Nakua was dead on the sideline, and then he came back to life. 
Nick Faye's giving the sound bites. <laughs> Nakua said I wasn't breathing and my shoulder didn't feel like it was in the right place. But I was good, though. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, man. I love you, Puka. New standard for people coming to work for this company. <laughs> right, yeah. If you if you think you weren't, if you're not breathing and your shoulder's not in the right place. You're still good. Come to work. You're good, though. Tough it out. I mean, it's kind of wild because Puka's on pace for almost 1,500 receiving yards which um, would be the most ever in the Super Bowl era. And then we'll talk about him momentarily here, but like is Sam Laporta the greatest rookie tight end we've ever seen? I think the yeah, answer is yes. it's, it's, it's That's over. That's done. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, Evan yeah. Ingram, I mean, if, if you go want to go back to like Jeremy Shockey. I don't, I don't even – I think Laporta's better. He might he might be, but I mean, you're, you're looking at, at one of the only three good rookie tight end performances of all time. As far as on a season, you've got snippets like Kincaid is great right now, and and every year you've got s little Kyle little, Pitts did have a thousand yards. Yeah, but he wasn't. I mean, he didn't have any touchdowns. He wasn't good for fantasy. I'm saying for yeah, fantasy. Okay, all right. Sam all right, Laporta's fine. season right now, his pace would be uh, 90 receptions for 961 yards and 8.5 touchdowns. So I mean, this is going to be a perennial fantasy champion type yep. of player. And, and uh, so, Trey McBride. And so is this guy. Yeah, Let's baby. go. Eight for 89 and a yeah. touchdown for Trey McBride. And he is – and one – well, I guess Mike's he got the touchdown. Mike's trying to figure out how to temper his I, his words. Because it's he, impossible. You talk about first ballot. Yeah. I am very excited for Trey McBride. He is – I I think that there are some fair things to say to the – Downside for McBride. Oh, I, go, go on. Yes, I completely so, agree. In four games with Kyler, right now the tight ends, the tight end position, is seeing thirty-seven percent of the team targets. And I know that uh, Michael Wilson is injured and and Hollywood's injured. There's there's not a lot of other great options. But what he is showing, and this is, I'm I'm going to speak the the hotness side, and then you can say whatever you think the tempered expectations should be. But what he's going to do the rest of this season, while there aren't weapons is going to be a massive first read target in the offense. Some of the catches he made, they were they were elite yeah. athletic wide receiver like fingertip jump in the air catches. He can take hard hits, he's used around the goal line, he's a first read target. And so going forward, he is going to be a key cog of what they are building this offense around. They go out and they draft Marvin Harrison next year. I think you're going to have a one-two punch here. Um I I don't see Trey McBride's usage Going away. Going away, of course not. No, that would make no sense. He's a very talented tight end. But centerpiece of offense, that won't be the permanent it's not position for Trey McBride. It, um, if, Like you said, if they draft Marvin Harrison, they seem like the favorites to do so. Uh, if Hollywood Brown is healthy, if Michael Wilson is healthy, if the running backs are healthy, like they, he is taking advantage of this opportunity, and everything you said about this year is very true. And I, we'll have a, a tough decision to make in fantasy drafts next year with a change in – um, kind of the situation for the receiving options. Yeah, I, I don't think he's going to be the one. Like, a Mark Andrews is the one. A Travis Kelsey is the one. But I do think he can be a two, like a, a Hawkinson, where it's like, obviously, he's never going to be better than Justin Jefferson or, or, or even Addison, but it's a very, very important, you know, critical piece of the offense. And you're building, like, over the, the remainder of the season, you are building that connection into Kyler's brain of, if something goes wrong, throw it to me. And that's very valuable. Chicago, New England, Arizona, Washington, Chicago. That's the, uh, the, uh, the top five. That's the current draft order. Say that again. Chicago. With the one. New England. With the two. Arizona. Mm -hmm. Washington, Chicago. Well, I didn't realize Washington was, was that bad. Terry McLaurin realized that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Cardio King. All right, um, we are going to move on into the duds here momentarily. We want to thank uh, our sponsor, NFL Sunday Ticket, on YouTube and YouTube TV. With NFL Sunday Ticket, it's never been easier to keep up with all of your fantasy players. You can watch the rest of the NFL season for half the price at $174 when bundled with YouTube TV. Sign up at youtube.com slash fantasy footballers. Terms and embargoes apply. No refunds. Pooped in his big boy pants. Justin Herbert had a terrible 
football game. He's yes, had two he terrible games in a row. This was one of those situations where it was like, do you stick with him going into New England? Do you not? You shouldn't have. Um, yeah, I mean, if you lose. No touchdowns, obviously. You lost Mike Williams. That was the beginning of it. Then you lose your first round wide receiver, realizing he's not good in Quentin Johnson. Then you lose your check down guy in Austin Eckler. I have also never, I know it was a very, very rainy game, but Justin Herbert has dealt with drops like I can't remember anyone. I mean, I watched, it wasn't just him. Parham no, dropped. No, Parham a, dropped. Yeah. Huge dropped. Uh, uh, Keenan uh, had a drop. Eckler is dropping things every game right now. It's, it's, uh, when you hit guys in the hands, uh, what are you supposed to do? Well, he's he's certainly not in a must start category. Like Brock Purdy would be somebody that you would you'd want to put in there over Justin Herbert at this point in time, and that goes for Patrick Mahomes too. Patrick Mahomes, twenty one for thirty three, one touchdown. Patrick Mahomes fantasy finish. I mean, thirteen fantasy points, twenty, sixteen, fifteen, three. Or I'm sorry, five. He's the quarterback eight on the year, which is like, oh, okay, that's a relevant fantasy guy. He's not been terrible. He's had, you know, big weeks, but that is not who you drafted in the second round. If the last five games for Mahomes on pace for 3,700 receiving yards and 24 touchdowns. Gross. And 13.6 interceptions. So that's 23, like Derek Carr. 23 touchdowns and 13 interceptions. Not good. The uh, Speaking of drops, the, the data that I'm seeing at least is the, the Chiefs are leading in drop passes. Yeah. So maybe that has something to do with it. And Herbert is uh, – they have the most drops since week eight. So into the duds at running back, you know, a guy that Mike and I have never liked, Zach Moss. You know, Jason, <laughs> he's kind of been your guy for years. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can't believe he had a bad game when he's that good. We tried to tell you to sit him down, but obviously you're relentless with him. Oh, man. Seven carries inside the ten. What? His opportunities were awesome. 19 carries, three targets. It – it just didn't have in Tennessee. Shut him down. I'd stick with him. Oh, for sure. Cincinnati coming up much weaker, softer defense. Also, they won the ball game and they're in the playoffs. So talk about coach of the year candidate Shane Steichen with a backup quarterback. With Impressive. mostly no Jonathan Taylor. With one wide receiver, one and a half. Assume we don't have to talk about Dud Austin Eckler anymore. No, that's sad. Let's talk about Dud Brees Hall. Uh, what were you saying before the show about quarterbacks? Because you. Zach yeah. Wilson was clearly the best quarterback that they had. We, we, and he's bad. We as fans, we as football watchers are clamoring for backups. You know, Zach Wilson sucks, right? He does. Don't hear what I'm not saying. Zach Wilson sucks. He is so clearly their best quarterback. We're like, oh, man, why aren't you going to the backup? They go to the backup. Oh, why, why isn't it Trevor Simeon? Trevor Simeon comes in. The coaches – are trying to win you know it's like oh why with mac jones why have you not been benching mac jones you've got bailey zappy behind it's like because bailey zappy isn't as good as mac jones and then they bring zappy and they score exactly zero points this keeps happening where it's like they're just aren't good i don't blame them for trying because no. the standard is set so low that you you just you're throwing something at the wall and hoping it works yeah it's it's just one of those things where you you really <laughs> careful what you wish for type of situations now there are uh, still things that can be done like the fact that you know Carson Wentz was out there on the waivers forever Joe Flacco was out there Joe Flacco was okay there there are things teams can do and it's unfortunate that maybe well I don't know if it's money or or uh, belief systems or whatever that maybe some of these teams haven't stepped up but Brees Hall can't do anything and the the Jets offense can't do anything here with the quarterback carousel they have i do think a lot of times the decision making is like the backups that stink at least know the system and it's a challenge to bring somebody else in and say go win in my system mm -hmm. i think i think that's part of the decision making jameer gibbs great start to the game didn't end up with a good game i mean eight for 60 on the ground and only one reception that was the problem and then big concerns here. I mean, I Devin Singletary last week, 82% of snaps. This week, 46%. Pierce had way more carries. I think it was like 15 carries for Pierce, eight for Singletary. The targets weren't there for Singletary. We talk it makes it super hard for next week because what do you do? You start Pierce, you start Singletary against the Jets? We talked about it a couple weeks ago that when Pierce first comes back, you're going to stick with Singletary because it'll be like working him in. But eventually it's going to get back to like that 50-50 split. We had hoped. 
that Singletary had played his way looking so good into like, hey, no, you're now our lead ball carrier, but that didn't happen. So next week against the Jets, I I would like to start neither. Yeah, but what if you have to start one? You'll, you, I would. Go, I assume you're going to start the wrong one. I would. <laughs> I would. I would start Damian Pierce. Um, big disappointment yeah. from Najee Harris and Jalen Warren. This was, this was not. I don't think anybody expected Arizona to dom. I mean, Arizona dominated this game. It was twenty four to three at one point. Uh, Kenny Pickett sucks. Why not go to the backup? Oh wait. Kenny yeah, Pickett's better. Th that was honestly a huge part of what happened in this game was losing Kenny Pickett early. Najee and Jalen Warren did not get it going. I mean, Warren was 9 for 59. That's pretty good. Just not a lot of opportunities when you're down by that many points. So both disappointments, both were starts of the week. We expected huge games, just whiffs. I mean, Najee's still RB21 on the week, I guess, but not what you hope for. No, it's not. Mike is... Uh, you got anything to speak on? Dude. Terry McLaurin, in a game where they were getting absolutely eviscerated by the Miami Dolphins, mm -hmm. zero catches for zero yards. Yeah. Zero touchdowns as well. Yeah. So I will be – I have lost the fantasy face up now for a third consecutive time because Terry McLaurin, Terry McLaurin had zero points. I still love Terry McLaurin. I am turning uh, very quickly on Sam Howell for ruining everything else around him. Logan Thomas had no catches. Uh, Dotson's season's been a disaster. I mean, Curtis Samuel. He's okay. He catches the ball sometimes. What's funny is, so this, remember we talked about Sam Howell's passing attempts? 42, 52, 45, yeah. 44, 45, 44. You know how many times he threw the ball this last game? I would love to know. But what would your guess be? My guess would he be back High in 30s. at least above 30. Yeah, I mean, that would make sense. 23 times. You lost what your were running they doing? back. You My, lost your running back. Miami dominated. Yeah, this no game. no first they, downs. They Miami just they they ran the ball so much. Devon Achan and uh Moster maybe maybe just give him a target. Throw to your number one wide receiver. Just you know, like sometimes you got to force it in there. Oh, so I you think have it a, will be next. Just week. rip it. You have a quarterback who is second in the NFL in passing yards and has zero fantasy-relevant wideouts. Incredible work, Sam. It's impossible. Sam. That's true, though. It I mean, is because, true. Look, Diami Brown, I know they called the touchdown back, but you're, you're scheming it up for Diami Brown on the goal line. Like, Terry McLaurin's last four weeks are – he's on pace for 535 yards and no touchdowns. Whoa. Yeah, that, that is – that's not acceptable. I mean, like – That is not acceptable. There's one man that would like those numbers, and that's Quentin Johnston. But otherwise, <laughs> terrible – Thielen didn't work out again. Three for twenty-five. Thielen is dying yeah. off. Yeah, I I thought we would have a bounce back with the new coach here, but nothing from Drake London. Nothing from Jake uh, Josh Downs. Nothing. Pure goose from Noah Brown, despite the injury. To uh, you saw Mechie get some targets in this offense. You saw Brevin Jordan get some targets, but Noah Brown, no involvement. Still coming back from injury, right? Um, yeah. Yes. He, he. This was his first game back after missing two, but he. He was out he there. He played an 81%. Yeah, he was out there. Jaden Reed, five targets, four for 16. Terrible game. Yeah, I yeah. think uh, Christian Watson dominated this game, played the majority of the game. He, he got injured but went out late after nine targets. You have to imagine going forward, Jaden Reed's going to be pretty important. Yeah, you all, but you also saw what Heath and Wicks and those guys get involved, so it was, it was just Jordan Love distributing. Um, was it uh, Tucker Craft as well? Yeah, yeah. Garrett Wilson, three for fifty, doing his best, guys. He's doing his darn best, dude. I I brought it up on Sunday Live, and I was talking to Andy about it. Of it, I had to make a decision: do I play Garrett Wilson in the rain with Tim Boyle, or do I put in Romeo Dobbs? And it was I could not overcome the name power of Garrett Wilson, and it was indeed the incorrect decision. It Going was, with Romeo was, Dobbs was the play. Yeah, and I mean, it, like, I, of course, it's all in hindsight, so well, it's much easier. But like the, the all of the red flags were there for Garrett Wilson, and so it's what if Garrett what Wilson's do do? toe hits the ground on that sideline catch, they're they're even, they're dead even. But um, but yeah, I mean, you're right. But it's you're three playing for fifty. Yeah, I see nine point two for Dobbs, six point five for Wilson. Yeah, the Muth did not get loose. No, he did not. And the truth is. He plays Thursday in a horrible over-under with a different quarterback. So, good luck.
on the Muth. He's not an auto yeah. start to me. Speaking of not an auto start anymore, the David Njoku experience, it disappeared with Joe Flacco, who we didn't know what to expect. Joe Flacco came in, um, six targets. Yeah, I don't I don't think it disappeared. I really don't. Well, in this game it did. Two, well, two for 17 it did. Two for 17, obviously, the, the results were awful, and, and that disappeared. But the, the situation, he was targeted, and he also had a massive monster ga uh, gain where he hurtled a guy. Yeah, yeah. It was like a 45-yard a awesome play where on review – I mean, yeah. just like his pinky toe hit the out of bounds line. Is that the one that? Because I saw that come through on sleeper, and then I saw his numbers, and they didn't match. Right. So he 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 was targeted, and he had big plays. You're talking about a pinky toe out of bounds from him not being in this list. So I I wouldn't move away from Najoku just because. Just Flacco scares me a little bit because I watched him having to block in the first half, and you know Flacco was not good, in my yeah. opinion. He he was not great, but he was much better than a lot of the alternative quarterbacks we've seen. Like Amari Cooper was able to have targets. I mean, he left. He got injured. But before he got injured, he was pretty involved. Yeah, John the, Johnson making an appearance. Uh, nice. Uh, I was going to say for Flacco, the uh, the Elijah Moore narrative, it, was, it struck. Well, Elijah Moore's targets, for what it's worth, have been there every week of yeah. the entire year. But Joe, him and Joe Flacco, they just they got Because of their time in New York? Yeah. I, I just I'm. He ended up with twelve targets, and Amari Cooper went out. So, like, if Amari Cooper misses, yes, if then Amari Elijah Cooper Moore's really in contention. The, the the play style of I won. It, it got me thinking about it. Of how many wide receivers out there have kind of like lost their career just because whatever stylistic differences of how they play versus how the quarterback plays, it it like it, it turns into well, no, that player's not good, but like Elijah Moore was was great as a rookie who had certain quarterbacks who would throw to him. Then he vanishes, gets kicked off the team because things are terrible. He's terrible to start this year. And one game with Joe Flacco, that, that had to be his, his highest yardage total of the season, right? It was his highest yardage total, but it was not a good game. I I'm mean, not, he, no, no, but I'm saying it's I, just, I just mean like literally 12 targets, you caught four passes. The week before, nine targets, caught three passes. Yeah. It's like that's 33% two consecutive weeks as a catch percentage. You know, he's relevant. If Cooper's out, yeah. Jason, would you play Elijah Moore in your flex or David Njoku in your flex next week? I would play if Cooper was out. If Cooper is out in my flex, oh man, that's gross because I I I would have to play Elijah Moore. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to play Elijah Moore. What was the target total for Cedric Tillman in the game? Because uh, I'd be curious. About, I mean, he'll come up uh, five. And he had five targets. No, six. I have six down. So I mean that's another player that'll get more involved if uh he could. Yeah. He could. Um all right, anybody else you want to talk about? No. Okay. We we don't have to talk about bad players anymore. Yeah, oh, that's great. Yeah, we made it through. We made it through. We have football tonight, right, Mike? We certainly do. We certainly Jacksonville? do. Jacksonville? Yeah. Ready to get Calvin Ridley back uh maybe? No. Maybe. Maybe. Going to win some championships. <laughs> ETN, score 20. <laughs> oh, yeah. You want to get yourself a little dynasty win? Yeah. I wouldn't mind it. You don't want out of that league? No, I don't want out of that league. I can okay. win a championship there. That is going to do it for today's show. We'll come back with a big waivers episode tomorrow. Very important. Good luck in your games tonight. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.